I imagine that would hurt. I imagine it would. Don't throw me out. Being a therapist. You. Yes. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to How I Ripped Off Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the only podcast in the world that goes through this little series called Tomorrow Gason that mm-hmm. I, Chip Thompson, wrote as a sort of 14, 15 year old. Mm-hmm. I'm joined, as always, by my co host, Mr. MC. That would be me. That would be you. Mm. Yes. Hello. Is How this are also you? our sound check as well because we haven't done one? Oh, yeah. It looks fine. Yeah, cool. Okay, carrying Great. on. Okay, so <laughs> what happened in the last episode? So yeah, uh, <laughs> I can't remember. In the last episode, MC and Tifa finally went on their date, but oh yeah, Chip drugged MC, took him back to his secret warehouse lair, mm-hmm. abandoned warehouse lair, yeah, and made his vampire brother Scott kill a child in front of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chip uh, did seem slightly guilty about it, maybe. Does that that makes it okay, right? Well, I mean, fine? he didn't watch, so yeah. I mean, that's fine. If he felt <laughs> bad about it, he looked away slightly. Yeah. In fact, I think he looked out the window, right? Which makes it all right because we know windows are the Gateway windows to the, to the soul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this week, the episode is called a Padawan Learner, so expect some Star Wars ripoffs. Maybe? I hope so. Yeah, that could be an interesting thing to do. Um, so let's do it. Should we get into it? This Always. is episode nine, <laughs> <laughs> Padawan Learner. Previously on Tamora Gason. As Scott returned, Chip stood back from MC. This time, Scott wasn't alone. In his cold, dead arms was a young boy. He must have been around 10 years old. Don't do this. There's no point. Chip sat on the desk on the other side of the office and gazed out of the broken window. Remember that time when we couldn't save that school full of kids from being blown to hell? And the way we felt, we'd failed afterwards? Well, MC, my friend, this is a little reminder of how much power I have over you, because I no longer have to feel any guilt whatsoever. He held the boy tightly, and held him in front of MC, who struggled with his chains, desperately trying to get free so he could help the kid. It was no good. Scott bit down hard on the boy's neck, causing blood to ooze out onto the office floor. Chip continued to look out the window, and refused to watch. Ah... MC had never felt so weak and helpless in all his life. Just... just just kill me, you bastard. He pleaded. MC, my dear boy, you think I'm going to kill you? Wrong. But don't forget, he said, raising the weapon high above his head. There's still more to come, and it's going to get a hell of a lot worse. Come on! Jay pleaded. No! MC replied firmly. Oh, go on. Jay tried again. Again? No. Please, MC. Come on, you need me. It'll help with your mission. MC wondered if it was still illegal to torture and murder people. Probably. I mean, I, would, I mean, you'd think so, upon. wouldn't you? He should ask Tifa. A misdemeanor, at least. <laughs> MC wondered if it was still illegal to torture and murder people. But since the last time those words were mentioned, it was Chip doing the torturing and his dead scum brother doing the murdering. Yep, yeah. uh, that's taken a dramatic turn quite early on, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, right. Uh, so, I mean, but you know, it's Chip doing the torturing, but his scum brother doing the murdering. So Chip did the murder. He's yeah. fine. He just told his brother to do the murdering, which is... <laughs> Jay, for the very last time, no. Jay did the little puppy dog eyes, and MC had never felt so much like killing a dog by squashing its head. Well, that's clearly not true. No, that's not you true would to never me. Kill yeah, a dog. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Uh, I like that after the uh, tragic ending of the previous episode, <laughs> we've gone straight into comedy for this next one. The old puppy murder joke. <laughs> Classic. Look, if you train me to be a ninja, I could be very useful. Jay thought he had a good point. Since MC had returned after being drugged, kidnapped, and tortured by Chip around three weeks ago, it hit Jay that one ninja against another ninja wasn't going to be enough in battle. Two would be better. True. Uh, the old saying, two ninjas yeah. are better than one. His maths is pretty solid. Although it probably means that Jay would turn evil, so... <laughs> no, it's only if Shino Khan trains oh, him. Oh, yeah, good point. If MC trains him, he'll only go half evil. Okay. So it's like, it's against the maths thing, isn't so, it? So, well, if you're evil, you, you torture children, but you don't murder them. So if you're half evil, you... Chip never tortured a child. You're getting that... that you're skewing the facts, fake news. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so start the episode, we've established Jay wants to be a ninja. ninja. So is he the Padawan learner of this episode? Ah, maybe. In Jay's mind, he was the man to do it. (laughs) Of course he was. Of course. However, in MC's mind, nothing would be more ridiculous than turning up at a vampire's nest 
armed to the teeth with stakes, crossbows, and other killing devices, and all of a sudden having Jay running, quoting something Corey Taylor had once said. I feel like we haven't used a lot of Jay isms uh, in this season so far because it was always money, Slipknot. Yeah. He was slightly perverted in some ways. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, since he's been poor, none of that's he, really come into it. Nah, he's still been pervy and weird. Oh, uh, yeah, there was Sara Lee at the start, yeah. I guess, that he was kind of creeping on. So, okay, so at least we're back to <laughs> creeping <laughs> and Slipknot. Slowly, yeah. Jay's regaining himself. <laughs> that would do my cool factor, sod all. MC thought, as Jay continued to follow him about the mansion like they were attached at the hip. Still, Jay tried. Just think of all the benefits you'd get from training me. MC thought for a second. Like the funeral home giving me a discount because of all the times you'd die. He thought all his comeback had sounded better in his head. Okay, well at least he acknowledges that there's a bad <laughs> comeback. It doesn't really make much sense. I think that's me acknowledging that it's a bad uh, comeback yeah, yeah, because yeah, I yeah. wrote it. Yeah. They walked into the living room where Louise sat amongst some heavy books. She'd recently been given the job of research since she couldn't do much footwork in her wheelchair. <laughs> Although good progress was being made. <laughs> I feel that could have been put in a more sensitive way. Yeah, I can't imagine that the doctors sort of said that to her. You know, it's like, what, you can't dance anymore? What are you doing? <laughs> Louise could now stand up slightly for a few seconds. Yeah. It might not seem much, but only a few months ago she couldn't move at all. This is good. This is good progress. Louis getting better. Now she's actually been to see an actual physiotherapist. <laughs> She'll be doing that footwork in no time. The books were all about various demons and demonic entities that people could raise. Just yesterday, a worried Japanese mother had come to the mansion to inform the gang of her son's plans that she had found whilst cleaning out his room. <laughs> <laughs> Most parents find, like, weed or porn. <laughs> or weed porn. Yeah. Oh... <laughs> Oh, sorry, we uh, haven't even seen what it is yet. Carry no. on. Apparently, her son and a few of his closer chums were planning on raising some kind of demon that would grant them wishes. Damn youths <laughs> and the demon summoning. <laughs> well, is it a genie they're going to raise? Or... I, I Robin think... Williams comes out of like all the <laughs> porn mags that are scattered on the floor. <laughs> From what MC knew of the subject, there were a few non-human beings that did this although the razors rarely survive the ritual. Razors, that's a new word, isn't it? It is. Mm. So they'd gotten to work on researching the ritual, which wasn't that great. <laughs> which wasn't going that great. Oh, sorry, I'll do yeah. that again. I was <laughs> discrediting myself. <laughs> sorry, 15-year-old chip. I, I, I mean, do they need to research it? Can they just say, hey... Don't, <laughs> you moron. Well, yes, they're trying to find out what the demon is they're trying to raise and how they would go about doing it. Yeah. But I mean, well, in the meantime, just, maybe the son is doing that. Can so. they just take away the kids' pentagrams? <laughs> or is it like, well, you take him away, but they'll find more. <laughs> they're all over the schools. MC wished Shindo Khan had been in contact recently to give them a hand, but he hadn't popped around for a few weeks now. Appeared. The word has appeared. <laughs> MC, and every time Shindo Khan pops around now, you have to drink. <laughs> Still, Jay continued to pester. Louise, knowing of Jay's pestering skills, had a little bet with herself that MC would be training Jay by the end of the day. That almost rhymes. Yeah. I wrote a little freestyle rap there. <laughs> I am M N M M. <laughs> okay. Jay finally said after MC's right eye started to twitch with anger. How about this? You train me to be a ninja, otherwise I'll be around you every day. For the rest of your life. Now that's a fucking threat. I know, right? <laughs> MC was horrified. He looked at Jay, and then he glanced over at Louise, who was trying to hold in her laughter. You're serious, aren't you? Jay nodded to his friend. MC sighed. <sighs> Fine. Okay, Jay, have it your way. I will train you to be a ninja. Yes! Jay screamed and did a little half cartwheel across the living room carpet, knocking several piles of books over as he did. Natural. Natural ninja, absolutely. <laughs> MC looked at his pupil, keeping his thoughts to himself. Never gonna happen. <laughs> there we are, Jay is the Padawan learner. Yeah. You are Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Am I Alan Guinness or Alec Guinness or um, a handsome young man? <laughs> You're always a handsome You're McGregor. young man. You're McGregor, yeah. You're Alan McGregor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The temporary temple of worship, which was not easy to say, was not as good as the last one. But since those ninjas had exposed the cult's dealings, the cult hadn't been able to worship the vampire god Escobar ah, in any location that was too exposed. I vaguely recall that from something. That was a thing, wasn't it? Was it first series? Maybe. 
Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't. It wasn't the second. So no, I'm sorry, sorry. Hmm, let's use our Tifa Lockhart <laughs> detective skills here. It was season five. <laughs> Steph looked around at the many vampires who bowed their heads and charted in Latin. It's always Latin. It always is, Latin. It is. Black robes were all a vampire needed to worship the great god. <laughs> That's really easy, isn't it? Uh, you know, you're not from this cult. What are you doing? Oh, we've got a black robe. All right, come on in then. Is brown okay? <laughs> oh, go on then. Black robes were all a vampire needed to worship the great god. But seeing as Steph was the leader, she dressed in a short black dress with red sleeves that ran down to about her elbow. Okay. Uh-huh. It made her stand out from the rest. Also, she's called Steph, which is a really <laughs> terrifying name. <laughs> I need a name for a vampire who's the head of a vampire god worshipping cult. Hmm. Steph. Yeah. That was a character from Neighbours. Before the conflict with the ninjas around a year ago, Steph's whole undead life had been dedicated to worshipping her god. But now she had another thing to concentrate on revenge. Ooh. Ooh. So, I, I don't remember this cult turning up. I vaguely recall That's somebody cool. got kidnapped or knocked out or something. Okay. And then... So, MC Chip took out this cult yeah. at some point. Okay, all right. I think so. I have to get on the old uh, Tomorrow Gates and Wiki. Yeah, look it up. yeah. The problem is it's updated too often. I can't keep <laughs> up. Being a vampire for around 25 years nearly, Steph had killed many people, but she never hated any one of her victims. Now she felt the hate engulfing her from the inside. Do you think the vampires get kind of like mm, competitive about how long they've been a vampire? Like, oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, nearly, yeah. nearly twenty-five, so twenty-four years, twenty-four and a half years. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be like a baby in vampire years, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, good. Here's a fun line. <laughs> that bitch who worked with those ninjas was about to pay. She may have escaped once, but not again. Steph would have her revenge, and the great god Escobar would reward her greatly. Is this, didn't Louise get kidnapped by a cult Sounds of vampires? Familiar. I think yeah. this was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your soap opera voice. Yes, yeah, my it's Steph really voice, yeah. Nice. <laughs> this is how I think a 25-year-old vampire cult leader sounds like. Mountain Dew. Steph thought as the vampires finished their chanting and were ready to move out. One of those ninjas was pretty cute. I wonder which one she's talking was, about. Was, was that it? the Ooh. wise-cracking scriptwriter, or was it the computer genius? The one with the intelligent face. <laughs> Take that, bitch! Jay screamed at the punch bag man. <laughs> What's a punch bag man? <laughs> you got a punch bag and drew a little face on it. <laughs> it's some sort of like homeless guy they've got to put on the street and just tied him up from the ceiling. He then slapped it and followed it up with a back elbow. MC just watched from the far end of the dojo of the mansion. <laughs> the far end of the dojo of the mansion wait, wait, I was wondering which dojo <laughs> The special designed dojo Which MC and Chip had built in their first week They had moved into the mansion Was still suffering from the battle that took place a few months ago Huge dents covered the four walls And some dried blood was hidden by handily placed carpet on the floor MC had been training Jay for five hours straight now Well he's nearly a ninja surely I mean that is quite impressive <laughs> <laughs> MC had been training Jay for five hours straight now, and MC was beginning to wish that Jay would just get bored and go and listen to some music, or Slipknot. Hey. Hey. However, Jay had picked up on some of the simple manoeuvres. A kick here, a punch there. He'd even got quite good at a particular throw. The, the only trouble was that now Jay believed he was a ninja. <laughs> Is he evil yet? Or... <laughs> MC had tried to explain that he had trained by doing 12-hour days for a year straight with no outside interference. Right. Does, I mean, what? in a sort of like, oh, no contact with the outside I world, guess. I guess? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Didn't have Facebook then. No, no. <laughs> no Snapchat. Jay had been to the toilet twice and had three fags. MC didn't go to the uh, third loo in <laughs> those entire year. <laughs> After Jay had finished shouting derogatory things at the punch bag man, oh God. he turned to face MC. <laughs> Come on, I want to go out and stake some vampires now. MC paused for a moment. Jay, where do you stake a vampire exactly? Then Jay paused for a moment. Um, in his face? <laughs> it's quite funny. Yeah. I'm laughing at my own joke. <laughs> <laughs> MC sighed, pointed to his heart so Jay would now, for future reference... How to kill a vampire. Yep. Uh, and said... Shall we move on? Pretty much how I want to move on from that sentence. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Louise pondered. 
can I really afford a new bikini? Because that's what women do. Women they think she, about bikinis yeah. they can afford. Yeah. She'd been sitting in the living room of the mansion all day, waiting for the two ninjas to return. After getting bored with Japanese morning and afternoon television, which as it turns out is even worse than back home, she started to flick through the mail order catalogues that often got posted through the door. So she's a woman watching daytime television and flicking through catalogues. How progressive I was back then. <laughs> she didn't have another physiotherapy appointment until next week, and the darkness of the Earth's nighttime was beginning to appear. That's the most goth thing I've ever oh written. Oh my god. <laughs> What time of day is it? <laughs> the darkness of the Earth's night time is beginning to appear. <laughs> so, like, six o'clock? Oh, yeah, oh, about oh, that. It is in my skin! <laughs> it is twelve hours past <laughs> the rising of the sun. Louise was supposed to be a secretary, and despite the fact MC and Chip had started to pay her when the gang first came together, that had now dried up. Bollocks, they never paid her. <laughs> They never, they, what did they pay her with? They're ninja dollars. Jay. Jay's oh, money. Jay. They yeah. paid Jay. Okay, right. So, so Jay no, paid her. <laughs> despite the fact that Jay had paid her. None of them had any money. And looking at the various bills sitting on the coffee table in the living room, Louise knew MC would have to take on some more paying clients to keep the mansion from being repossessed. But it was abandoned. But they, didn't they and purchase they squatted it? it. Oh. I think that was, didn't they legally purchase it? Yeah. yeah at right. some point. Right. I haven't looked over the contracts, so. Okay. <laughs> also, it would be quite nice to be able to buy things instead of not being able to buy them because she was poor. I was pretty relatable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel you, Louise. <laughs> I would love a new bikini. <laughs> Louise quickly reminded herself that they were doing a great job in helping people. That was MC's and Chip's mission. However, now it was just MC, seeing as Chip had turned his back on them. Oh, that really fucking clumsy sentence. But maybe Jay could help out. Her thoughts were quickly dashed as she heard yet another loud crashing noise from upstairs. Uh, maybe not. Before trying to resist the temptation to switch the telly on again, before before trying to resist the temptation to switch the telly on again could get into Louise's head, <laughs> fucking hell, there was a knock at the front door. She thought about calling upstairs to the guys. No, she said aloud. I'm an independent woman. <laughs> <laughs> No, she stated aloud. Hi, man. <laughs> Just keep all these attempts in the final thing. I'm an independent woman. <laughs> Even if I am bound to these wheels for a short time, I can answer the door by myself. All my women, my independent <laughs> women. Oh, that was tough. Well done. Confidence brewing, Louise wheeled herself towards the front door calling out to the stranger behind the thick wooden door. I'll be there in a sec. Louise finally arrived and reached up for the doorknob and twisted it open. Standing there was a fairly good-looking guy. A little pale for her liking, but all the same, he wasn't bad to look at. That's what women do, just judge everyone they meet. It's like, <laughs> am I attracted to you? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're a person, yes. What's your name? Hello. She said in her polite and chirpy tone. Was that polite and chirpy enough? Yeah, I'd say so. How can I help you? I need the ninjas. <laughs> the man got right to the point <laughs> as he was swept out of that Guy Ritchie film. <laughs> I hope he has lots of lives. <laughs> well, Louise was a little surprised by the man's directness. You'd better come in. As Louise led him into the lobby area, he introduced himself as Jamie, a night builder <laughs> from the city. <laughs> ah, yes, a night builder. Uh, yes. What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> I want to be a night builder. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is a night builder and does he mean darkness of the earth <laughs> night time builder <laughs> nice <laughs> Louise didn't think he looked too much like a builder he wore a black hoodie that covered his smallish body and a pair of black jeans that looked brand new and not the kind you would wear on a building site and also he hadn't yelled out, All right, darling, fancy a shag <laughs> he wasn't looking you at look pastry of the sun <laughs> you look prettier if you smiled <laughs> Sorry to all the nighttime builders listening, that's very offensive. <laughs> that's true, it's daytime builders. Yeah, like, yeah. Nighttime builders are very progressive. <laughs> They're just like, <laughs> the rise of the nighttime <laughs> in the dark sky. Yeah. Also, I respect women. <laughs> <laughs> she pointed to the stairs and said, First floor, turn left, and it's the last door down the far end of the corridor. Jamie nodded and headed upstairs. 
Louise started to head back towards the living room when she realised that maybe he should knock before interrupting the guy's training session. But he was nowhere to be seen. He'd already made his way to the first floor in a matter of seconds. <gasps> Nighttime builders are fast. <laughs> As Steph looked through the binoculars, she could see that Jamie had made it inside of the large house. The mansion. The man- that it was almost as big as a mansion. Now her plan was beginning to take shape. Once Jamie had distracted the two ninjas and taken them to them away from the house, she and two other vampires would wait inside the van that was parked just down the road from the mansion and await Jamie's signal. Then the rest of the vampires from the cult would drive to the point where Jamie was supposed to take the two ninjas and attempt to kill them. Oh, the master <laughs> plan. Steph didn't believe they would be successful in killing the ninjas, but she didn't care. All she wanted was the girl, and from what Steph had already seen of her, that wouldn't be too hard. Steph ran her long, dark hair through her fingers, anxiously awaiting her chance to get her revenge. Her. Tamora Gleason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God, that's so hard. I think that's the first time I've ever used the title of the show in uh, in the text yeah. of the, the the body of the actual thing. And I'm pretty sure that we probably got the translation wrong, and it oh, actually God, means yeah. like watermelon or yeah. something. In case you are not aware or don't remember, the series is called Tomorrow Gacing because I think I may ask Jeeves what the Japanese word for revenge was, and somehow came up with Tomorrow Gacing. I think it's a fake word. I don't know where I got it from. Um, but yeah, so we've used it. I mean, it's not in italics. I really think it should be. I might it should be. Yeah, change yeah, that. Just, I'm just going to lean in and do that. Uh, there, there we go. Much yeah, yeah. better. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end this part of Padawan Learner. What mm. do we think of this episode? Well, I'm. I do enjoy the callback to a previous episode. With yes. The yeah, that was quite nice. Escobar yeah. world building. Yeah. 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 Um, Jay was annoying, I guess. Comedy Jay. Comedy Jay. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a change in tone from the end of the last episode a to lot this lighter, one. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you watch these, if you <laughs> when they're made into <laughs> an award-winning TV series, when HBO picks this up, if you watch these episodes back to back, you'd be like, "This is the same fucking show." Or ah. what? Um, but it has been three weeks. Obviously, MC's got past that the torture, the kidnapping. Ah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> But uh, so far, no mention of Tifa. No, yeah. Chip hasn't shown up. Yeah. So maybe he's just in the background lurking somewhere. Yeah. Um, but obviously, it seems like Louise is going to be the one in danger. Yes, it's true. Although, I mean, Jay is uh, going to have a bunch of vampires going after him. Because presumably, they're going to think that Jay is the other danger. But then they murdered. When did they recognise Chip? Because he would have been there last time. Yeah, but then they kill him all. I, I, don't I mean, know. obviously not enough, because they're yeah, coming for uh, Tamara Gleason. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to see what happens. But there's a lot going mm-hmm. on. So you've got the vampire cult, mm-hmm. you've got Jay trying to be a ninja, mm-hmm. you've got Louise ordering bikinis, <laughs> uh, you've got Shinno Khan not being around, yeah. uh, and you've got this whole sort of, I don't know if the subplot about the mother's son who are trying to raise a demon with wishes is going to come back. Oh, yeah. Or... I think it's never going to be mentioned no, again. No, me neither, yeah. actually, yeah. So I look forward to finding out what happens with the son's poor mags <laughs> <laughs> in uh, Padawan Lana Part 2, Episode 10, when we come back next week for some more Tomorrow Gason. Mm-hmm.